All right, guys, I figured it's time to start documenting this one. This is a project I've been uh, threatening to do for about eight months now, and I finally got off my butt and got it done. Um, what you're looking at is a tank holding about 1,325 gallons of water. And it's made from four by four stacked log cabin style. And uh, they're held together. Each course is held together with uh, 20 of these, five to each leg. And uh, every other end, they, so that, that one goes through, then that one, it goes through there, and then that one, it goes through there. So that the nails are not stacked on top of each other and cracking the ends. And uh, that's pretty stout. Goes all the way into the ground. Got right here. First course has one of these. 12 inch galvanized spike. And that's actually driven into the limestone. Yes, that was hard, but that was my intern's job, so it didn't really matter. That was done about a year, I guess almost three years ago now. Um, gotta have a beer when you're doing this kind of work. It is summer ale, because it is summer. Anyway, uh, I've got it lined with a rubber liner, and I just plumbed it. And what they're gonna be is four ebb and flow beds, one on each corner. Now this is not aquaponics. There's no way to balance 1,300 gallons of water with grow bed overstock it. This is more aquaculture using an aquaponics component as a filtration system. Okay, so this is going to help keep the water quality really good and we'll grow like low nutrient requirement uh, things in it like mint would be a good thing we'll probably grow in there, watercress, things like that because the amount of fish you'd have to put in here would be a major overstocking and then you'd need God, you need so many square feet of uh, grow bed to balance this system out. I mean, it's it's hard to fathom how much water's here. The water level right now is sitting at 34 inches and it will overflow at 38 inches. And you can see, I'll take you over there. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna shut the pump off for a second, but I wanna show you something before I do. So you see the water just kind of trickling out of those ends there. Well, I got one inch right there running full bore. And I had that running just to, oxygen, just to get oxygen into the system. I dumped 70 little fish in it today. But if you watch, as soon as I just put my fingers over there, we got plenty of pressure all around. And those are all unregulated and doing that off of this pump. So no worries about running the system. Let me unplug this. And I'll show you a little bit more about it. And then I got to get back to work and we'll splice stuff together and see how far we get today. Um, okay, you can see right there. What I did is took a circular saw and set it to about one inch, actually an inch and a half of depth and just made multiple cuts with it straight across. And then I went and plunged into it from both sides and cut that notch out, whatever didn't come out. Oh, there's the fish that went in there today. See him, little perches. For some reason, when I turn the fountain off, they come out. But when I turn the fountain on, they all run in under, under the only cover that there is. Uh, but anyway, I, I have that set to overflow there. And of course, when that overflows, you can see right here, the lower flow right here and it goes right into this big swale so whenever we have a rain event or anything that overflows the system we're dumping this water into the swale I stained the uh, top rails before we installed them so they don't get stained in the water once I'm done with all the plumbing and get the uh, ebb and flow beds built I or more likely my farmhand will go ahead and stain the whole system the same color as that it's just a dark uh, Olympic stain and that's as much for protection as it is for beauty. And uh, you can see I have, let's, right there you can see I have a plumbing strap used to hold the pipe in place. So it's all dry fit. There should be no need to glue this. That way if any kind of modifications need to be made, they're really easy to make. But with that plumbing strap in place, uh, nothing's gonna go anywhere. The platform I have built there is built with some center blocks. And you can see I have some just the cheapest 16 inch tile I could get from Lowe's. I have two of them sitting on the bottom since I'm sitting on a EDPM liner. And that liner is black. I don't know why it looks like that, uh, but it's, it's jet black. You can see right here. But for some reason, in the water, it looks white. That's fine with me. And uh, anyway, I got those uh, tiles sitting on the bottom. The center blocks sit on the tile. And then that pump sits there. And that gives them a lot of cover under there. I'm going to be building a lot of towers, I'm going to call them, a single tile instead of two uh, with double center blocks and I'll make stands for plants uh, around the open areas of the edges. 
And the height that we built this to, you know, we could have went higher. I had enough. You can see how much scrap material I have from the liner. I could have went higher and deeper, more water. But this is a perfect height to just kind of you pull up, you sit your elbows on it. It's going to be a great place to sit and watch fish swim around. We'll throw some koi in it along with the uh, edible fish. And uh, just a great place to hang out, kind of like a bar. And if you look at it the way it's going to be, when I'm going to have these guys sitting here like that, one on each corner. So there'll be an open space of about five feet on each rail. So you can imagine, you know, eight people kind of sitting here uh, shooting the breeze, watching the waterfall go. It's going to be pretty nice. Really easy to build. And I think you kind of get the hint of what it's going to look like when it's done. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check back with you later and keep uh, splicing this stuff together until we get to something approaching done anyway. Take care. I'll catch up with you next time. All right, guys, we're kind of on another stage now. And I thought it'd be good for you guys to see these beds as they're being built. So uh, you see I now have a uh, valve on that piece of one inch that's coming straight off the pump. And that allows me to throttle it. And still, I still got a lot of flow there. But you can see that all of the eventual ebb and flow beds are now running overflow. And uh, what I've done, and we'll have to fine tune them, but I've got them set to about the flow rate that I think will be necessary for the ebb and flow beds. And uh, this is good news because you can see I still have, uh, actually I said that one's running kind of hot. About right there. How do I know that? Just from looking at a bunch of them. And will I be exactly accurate? No, I'll have to dial them in. But yeah, I'd say that one's a little hot too. Right about there. But that's about the speed. The beds of this size seem to uh, cycle best for me. So now I've got the hard part of the job. I got the plumbing in. Actually, not yet. Now I have to build a bell siphon. So I'll build four bell siphons. Uh, one for each of these uh, beds. And I'll come back and uh, kind of show you that working. And then we'll start getting the uh, lava rock into each of the beds. We'll catch up with you and splice right, guys, that in. I, uh, I figured it was about time for another update on the project. Uh, this is actually a great time to do this because you can see exactly how the bell siphons are installed and how they work. What I've got, I've got all four of these uh, at this point cycling. That one's actually dumping right now. That one's building up to start dumping any minute. That one's cycling over there. But you can see how these work nothing moves in a bell siphon it's it's a very passive system now i want to let this one run because it's probably going to break for us i'll come back to it and i can show you over here with this one it's not running yet all you have is a stand-up pipe there and of course this is going to be filled with media it'll be lava rock and at the bottom we got some holes and uh that just sits there like that that's all a bell siphon is and eventually, when you get enough water running through it, it creates a suction, starts pulling, it causes negative pressure. The water will drain all the way down, like that one's doing right there. And eventually, it'll get down to the bottom of those holes. And uh, when it gets to those holes, it'll actually break. As soon as some air gets inside there, that'll break that siphon. Because what's happening right now is water is being pulled up and into that overflow. So that whole interior of that piece of two inch pipe right now is full of water. And uh, he's been cycling really reliable for me. So I'm sure this one will give me headaches now that I want to actually put it on video for you. But uh, I don't know, we'll see here in just a second. Should break any second now. As soon as I take it away from there, it'll break. So you can see the water's now down to that hole. There it went, just broke. If you look down here, it's no longer running. So now it'll fill back up. And as soon as one bit of air got inside there, it's just like if you had a drinking straw and you put it in a glass, you put your thumb over it, you lift it up. When you let your thumb off, the water comes out of the straw. It won't hold it anymore. So that's where I'm at now. I put that spray bar in too. That's a real good aeration for the system. I don't see any of our friends. Oh, there's a couple little friendly sunfish out there. I don't know if you can see them though. They're under that uh, overhang. They've been cruising around. They seem pretty happy considering they were uh, out in a free pond just two days ago. Anyway, I got more to do. Next step is I have to make media excluders 
which are just basically a piece of four inch pipe that'll go around these with some slits cut in it. And what that'll do is keep the media from getting in here and messing everything up. Anyway, we'll be back with you in just a bit. Okay, next stage, you got the media excluders done, which again, they're just a pipe, larger piece of pipe. Uh, well, you can either drill holes. What I use is I use a uh, chop saw. Uh, real safe way to do it because you don't get any kickback or anything. I've done this with a you know, a handheld circular saw and there's a lot of propensity for kickback. I really don't recommend that. It's a good way to have one of those things right there, a thumb cut off or at least severely damaged. So chop saw works good for these. If you don't have a chop saw, you can drill holes in them. The reason we like doing them this way is when you put holes in something, you get basically like a cheese grater effect. So eventually you get roots that come in from the side and what you do is you reach down in there and you just clean them off, right? Or uh, you can actually just take your media excluder and turn it with these and it does a pretty good job of cutting them. And you can reach around your bell siphon uh, stand up and, and clean them out. Well, if you got holes in there, they tend to uh, claw into your hands. The other thing is you get a lot of flow with this, awful lot of flow. And you can see it's not like they're uh, done by precision measurements or anything. Just uh, take your chop saw and go to town with it. And what that does, that sits there. Now we got the, the long part, getting these all full of uh, lava rock. The lava rock will sit around these. And uh, these actually, what they're really doing is keeping the lava rock, or whatever media you're using, from getting inside the bell siphon. And it makes servicing and making changes really easy. Because once that's there, just imagine it was left there and you're looking from above. You can pull your bell siphon out of the way and you don't have to worry about anything caving in there. Well, let's say you want to change how high you're setting your water height. Well, you can reach in there, you can pull that pipe out and replace it. Or if you want to drain the whole thing really fast, you can reach in and actually unscrew your fitting here and drain it right to the bottom and keep it to the bottom while you're doing whatever maintenance you're doing. Like maybe you want to move these. Given they're only uh, 14 gallons, you know, two people can move one of these pretty easily. One person can do it on their own if you want to like change your configuration or layout or what have you. Anyway, I got a bunch of lava rock to pick through. Because what I've started doing, it's a lot more work in the beginning, but it makes a lot less work long term, is I separate my big and my large lava rocks from my bags, which are sitting right over there. And I put all the little ones in at the top. These take five bags each, so I got 20 bags to sift through. Probably won't get done today, but uh, when I get one of them full, I'll, I'll get back in and we'll splice that in. All right, guys, uh, I have a lot more I want to do with this project, but uh, I think the general build is done, so I'll get this piece spliced in and get the whole series uploaded for you. You can see we've got the entire tank built. We've got it filled with water. We've got it cycling. We've got the four ebb and flow beds actually filled with lava rock. And running our uh, our bell siphons for us. That one's actually cycling right now. Uh, I've started to plant this one with some uh, watercress and mint. Uh, this, this system has about 1,400 gallons, 1,375 gallons, somewhere in that range of water. Um, we will never be able to put enough grow bed in to overstock this system to do true aquaponics. So this is an aquatic system with some biological filtration using aquaponics-like feature. That's what this actually is. So we'll put low nutrient requiring plants like watercress and mint and things like that into these beds. I'm actually thinking about putting a couple shallow wicking beds there and there. Basically, I could do these same beds, do a constant flow and set the water level about there and grow things like water spinach in soil and be able to give them nutrient. So that might be another crop yield that we'll be able to put on here. The other thing that we're going to be doing, you can see I have the pump sitting on a platform there. That, pump's built, that platform is built out of uh, porcelain tile, the cheapest stuff I could get, and some center blocks. And uh, I also have, you can't see it because the water has clouded up a bit as we're recycling the system, but there are tiles on the bottom that center blocks are sitting on because I didn't want center blocks sitting on this, uh, this black plastic liner, even though it's 25 mil and very tough. So, what I'm thinking about doing is actually creating a couple towers of center blocks and stacking the center blocks so you've got like the holes this way, the holes this way, and the holes that way to give a lot of hiding space for our fish, a lot of aquatic system in there. And then across them, instead of using these, these uh, standard tiles, these are 16 inch standard tiles, they make porcelain tiles now that look like you have a wood floor. They're about 36 inches long. So we could do like a tower here and a tower here and then do these long porcelain tiles and stack about three or four plants in pots uh, like the emergent vegetation I have in the stuff over there. We can do that on two or three sides, leave one side open for something I'll talk about in a second. Um, but that'll give us a lot of aquatic yield beyond the fish. Now, 
The other thing I want to do is figure out what to do for lighting. What I've been thinking about doing is suspending a bug light over here and putting it on a timer. And then at night, bugs will come in, they'll hit the bug zapper and fall in the water. Uh, somebody posted something on Facebook for me that's like a something bow fish light for fishermen. Basically, like you live on a lake or you have a pond, you set this thing over and it's got these lights that sit out in front of you. And it's just a standard light bulb and it's got a little spinner underneath it. They're like 300 bucks. I think that's too much money. But what I started thinking is whenever there's light around water, a lot of bugs end up in the water anyway. Well, I have uh, sitting inside right now an unused set of uh, solar string lights. So they're basically LED Christmas style lights in white. I'm thinking about just putting them up underneath the lip all the way around. And that'll bring plenty of bugs in and they'll just fall and hit the water. We'll see how that works because that'll look very clean and it's solar. So I won't need another power uh, circuit to run that. I'll only need the power to run the pump. So that's the thing that I'm going to be adding next. And uh, got a lot of stuff to do with this. Uh, you can see the water has clouded up a bit. One of the things I want to do in addition, in addition to more filtration is more shade. Now just doing the potted plants will do a lot of that. The other thing I want to do, I'm going to take some two inch pipe. And I'm gonna make about a three foot square. And now this is an eight foot square, so you can kind of get the scale of that. And I'm gonna set that in the center. And I'm gonna anchor it somehow so it stays in the center. It might move a little bit, but it basically will stay in the center kind of in the area that my hand's in. We can then take floating plants like the ones that have already anchored themselves back in that corner, set them in the center. That'll give us a whole area of shade in the center. It'll also give us a whole ecosystem of roots going down for our plants and it'll keep them from getting beat up by the aeration uh, wand or by the overflows. So that's kind of where I'm going next with this, but I mean, what I wanted to say is, I'm pretty blown away by how big a difference just adding a coat of stain has made to this. We're gonna add a second coat. Um, I don't think it really shows itself the best in its best light right now because it's still wet and it's got shadow and light on it, but it looks pretty daggone good. I was worried that the lower tiers, the lower four uh, courses, would look a lot different than the top because they were very faded because that was done, it was originally going to be a platform here for a water tank, for a, uh, a rain catch water tank, and that was done about two years ago. So there's a big difference between these and those, but now that they're stained, they don't look much different at all and they're going to get a second coat. And things are starting to look really good. We're going to do pea gravel all along the base of this building to help with erosion. And then in this area here, the ducts have mudded up and all this area that's been torn up by doing this project, we're going to do about a two inch layer of wood mulch. That should make it look nicely landscaped. We'll get everything cleaned up. And man, this should look like uh, kind of like a Japanese formal water garden when it's done. And uh, all in guys, I'm about a thousand bucks into this. And I think this will grow us a hundred to 200 pounds of fish a year, plus the, the, uh, the plant yields, plus just having the beauty and the sound and everything. So I think this is a worthwhile project. It was more difficult than I expected. Putting that pond lighter in was tougher than I expected. Uh, building this, this course to, uh, structure was more difficult than I expected. And it was made more difficult, of course, because the first four courses were filled with compacted road base. That's what that stuff is there. But uh, I didn't get that stuff out. My, uh, my farmhand Cody had to do that, but that did set things back. We do have two layers of one and a half inch thick foam board insulation on the bottom as a ground insulation. I think it's going to be a great project. We'll be going forward with it, but as soon as I get this video uploaded and spliced into the rest, I'm going to get this up for you guys so you can see it. So this will end this series and more will be coming on this system. If you have questions about this system or how I've done anything, post them in the comments below. If you want to see some of the other things that I've done, you can see some other playlists that you can subscribe to over here. And uh, you can also subscribe to my channel if you're not yet a channel subscriber right there. And if you really like what I'm doing, you want to support us at maybe even a dollar a month, please consider supporting us on Patreon and you can find out about that right there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this project. A lot more to come from it. And remember, I do a podcast every day at the survivalpodcast.com. The survivalpodcast.com. It's an audio podcast. And if you're lazy and you don't want to type too many uh, letters, TSPC.co will get you there as well.